Hello, my name is Peter the Knitter, and I suffer from Ikergehib Gewoskibis. Ikergehib Gewoskibis is a birth defect, and the name is an anagram that stands for I can't really get into handheld video games very well, Obia, Itis, Stupefy, uh, Kachow, Bazinga, Swiggity Swiggity, Amen. I have issues getting emerged in and addicted to handheld video games, and that's okay. There are millions of people around the world who suffer from this exact same thing every day. I hope. If you're like me and you suffer from this thing that I'm not going to try to pronounce all in one take again, listen up. Boy. What if I told you there was a cure? What if I told you there was still hope? What if I told you you already know where this joke is going, so I'm going to kind of abort it and just cut myself off? Sonic Advanced. I will defend this series till the day I die. It was one of the very few handheld video games I could actually get emerged in, and for that, it is one of my fondest video game memories. Just listen to my testimony that I gave in a question and answer video. What's your first Sonic game? But I think it would probably be Sonic, Aven oh, Sonic Adventure 3, actually. Yeah, Sonic Adventure 3. Yeah, I meant Sonic Advance 3. I'm sure that explains a lot. People thought I was either joking or going insane. It's beautiful sprites, it's legendary music, it's loads of content replayability, and perfect difficulty level. For me, the Sonic Advance series was a perfect example of a well-done video game trilogy, and with each game being better than the last. But all that being said, it's kind of extremely underrated. Kind of and extremely being in the same sentence kind of just set each other off to say it's... Averagely underrated. This is one of Sega's first attempts to bring back the classic 2D Sonic genre after moving into 3D games, and a lot of people say that it failed to live up to that original Genesis series. Because of this, Sonic Advance games are often seen as mediocre, but do they really deserve that? Should they be seen as a failure or an accomplished mission? A mediocre handheld throwback or a freshly redesigned, well-made trilogy? To answer that, I'm going to move on from making a infomercial parody to making a news parody, because I am very bad with segues. So let's hand it over to Sliver with the weather. Sliver. It's hot. We got three games to look at and a lot to say about all of them, so let's completely ignore how <clears throat> terrible that segue was and look at Sonic Advance released in 2001 for the Game Boy Advance. Hence why it's called Sonic Advance. Just, just a fact. It's not supposed to be funny. Why does this sound like I'm trying to make a joke? Sonic Advance, released just after Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast. This game added a lot to the already fantastic two-dimensional platforming Sonic genre. It had the same basic idea for stage design and gameplay that we already knew, but we'll dive into that soon enough, and why people prefer the classic games to this series. But for now, let's take a look at the new features that made this Sonic Advance series, and more specifically this first game, so unique. Actually, thinking of all the cool features they added while still keeping true to the original formula, it kind of seems like this game would be much better than the classic 2D entries, but such doesn't seem to be the case for most people. So let's check out each edition, and j just tell me that it doesn't sound like the perfect formula and concept. First, characters. This game had plenty of playable characters, each with his or her own special abilities and ways of progressing through each stage. And yes, I said his or her. I apologize if they identify as any other of the 68 possible gender identities. In past games, you could play as maybe Tails or Knuckles, but then in Sonic CD, you just had to play as Sonic again. It didn't seem like having different characters to choose from was a big priority, even though fans of the series would argue that being able to play as or replay the game with different abilities make the games last twice as long. Having four playable characters in one game seems like a good enough reason to give it a chance on on its own, and that's one of the biggest innovations of the Sonic Advance series. In this first game, you get Sonic, who runs faster than everybody else, I think, either that or he's actually just completely pointless, Tails, who can fly, which I definitely don't always choose to beat levels easily and fly past at any tough platforming parts, Amy, who has some cool melee attacks with her hammer, and Knuckles, who can climb walls and glide. All cool ways of getting through each stage, even if it can get a little bit cheaty. Peter played through the whole thing with just Sonic, because he's a good boy. <laughs> Next innovation, the Chow Room. They added a Chow Room. You know that one aspect of the Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 games that you spent 90% of your time on? Well, Sonic Advance had that too. Hatching, raising, naming, and feeding these cute little chow was a huge part of adventures, and although it was a little bit more primitive in these advanced games, the chow room did have some fun aspects about it. For one thing, the early 2000s were an era where having little creatures to take around with you and carry in a handheld game was pretty huge. Everybody had some kind of Neopets thing, or if you were like me, those were too mainstream for you, and you had one of those cute little, little pet shop things. Did I just say a little, little pet shop? The little pet shop things, with like only two buttons and somehow they kept you occupied for hours. This is actually probably one of my favorite things the video game industry has ever given us. It's got a clip. 
It's got a clip so you can use it as a keychain or clip it onto yourself. You, I, I can't even begin to explain how many teen boys I saw walking down the street with one of these clipped to their belt. They were pretty cool people. So yeah, oh, you had a... I want to say it's... Uh, Alright, so let's see if this thing... Oh, look at that. This actually still works. What in the actual heck? Okay. Well, I see um, a bird. Having a seizure. Uh, you see, uh, see, I don't know what that means, though. Alright, it's been a while, game. Can you throw me a tutorial or something? Oh, okay. Alright, so you got one button to uh, switch what you're doing. And the other button to... Okay. So... There, already, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hit this. No, I don't, I don't even know what that does. See, we don't have enough people on YouTube nowadays making, like, tutorials on this kind of a thing. We all, there, uh, why does nobody do tutorials on these kind of things? Because I can't figure out how to work it. That's what I want to do. I want to do the bottle. Not something I thought I'd say today. All right, do that. Do, do something. Does this, you, you put this in, it's like a button. I used to be so good at this! Like and subscribe for more Little Pet Shop tutorials. Want to join my free gift card giveaway? You could also transfer your chow onto the Sonic Adventure games, which was actually just about the coolest thing ever as a kid. Third edition, LAN multiplayer that I never got to do because I did not own two copies of the game. Fourth edition, presentation. Graphics that to this day remain some of the best sprite art I've ever seen in any video game. Music worthy of the classic Genesis games and a very unique theme for each world. So overall, this game was very modernized and fresh, but it still stayed true to the classic Sonic gameplay. But that's where things get a little bit complicated and opinionative as we look at the gameplay itself. See, Sonic Advance does have a bit of a different premise than past Sonic games. Well, the Genesis and CD games were primarily platforming. Advance seems to be like 60% based on speeding through cool loops and reaching max speed. This may or may not be a bad thing because although Sonic games are based on speed, there isn't much for the player to do during these lengthy dashes. For the most part, they require you to hold forward and push the jump button on occasion. Seeing as there's no way to see what's coming ahead of you, they don't put many obstacles, so these segments end up being more like watching a movie or a video than it is actually playing a game. It's satisfying and cool to see how they use the different springs and swings to launch you further towards the end of each stage, but then you only have like 40% of the levels that you actually control and need skill to pass through, so how good are those parts? So the platforming parts where you actually control and use skill are split into two different kinds of difficulty. There's the parts that are difficult because you need to platform and use your character's ability to move on, which is good. And then there's the other parts which are just difficult because they run you right off a cliff and expect you to know when to jump, which is... No good. Maybe 20% of the obstacles in this game are trial and error. And error, and error, and oh hey, I got it this time, that's nice. I could see where if you memorized a lot of these levels, you could have a pretty satisfying smooth run, but just playing through them for the first time can be a bit obnoxious. As a kid, I didn't mind the mindless sections because I played through these games on the original Game Boy Advance, and honestly, you cannot see what is going on on your screen 70% of the time because it's not backlit. Or I was playing during a car ride where it's difficult to focus, so the mindless sections didn't bother me much at all. So overall, the gameplay and level design are fine, but just nothing special. It has its issues, but it can be satisfying, and even the speed parts have some purpose and challenge to them at times. I will say that above all those issues and aspects, the boss battles were always just fantastic, and even more fun than the original Genesis games at times, which adds a lot. Overall, the first Sonic Advance game, I can see why people don't like it nearly as much as the classic Genesis series, but I still like it quite a bit. You know, for someone who said they would actually allow their life to end in defense of a mildly popular video game series from the early 2000s, you don't seem to be making a very good argument over it. Are you a dingle butt? What? How dare you judge this series by the first title? I'll have you know things get drastically better as the series goes on. In fact, you should be getting pumped up at how insanely good things are about to get. The goodness levels of the next game of this series are greater than or equivalent to the, what you would expect from 
based on the first game. Stop hating on Sonic. <laughs> So the second game is about the same as the first. Sonic Advanced. It's Sonic Advanced, but two. It actually improves a lot from the first game in my opinion, for a few reasons. Reason one, Cream the Rabbit was introduced in this game. No, she was actually introduced in the comics, you freaking pleb. <laughs> Shut up, I don't care. This actually makes Sonic Advance 2 a pretty momentous game, and the addition of her character also adds a cool new aspect, the story. Since they're introducing a new character, Sega decided to add a story to this title so they could give some narrative and introduction to Cream, and it actually adds a ton of replay value. You start off playing as Sonic, but every other world that you beat unlocks you a new character. The first being Cream, who you save from Eggman. The game gives you a short comic book style cutscene introducing her, and after that you unlock her as a character. This is cool because you need to finish the game as Sonic to unlock everyone, but then you have to beat the entire game as other characters to finish their stories. Cream needs to find her mother, Tails... I, I don't know, he just wants to follow Sonic. Knuckles wants revenge on Eggman for tricking him. Again, like, seriously, how does Eggman keep tricking him? I get, I, I kinda know how it was in Sonic Adventure, but we don't even see how or why in this game, and the only reason Knuckles realized he's been tricked is because Sonic beat him in a battle. It makes sense. So Cream enters the Sonic series, and she's a pretty cool character to play as. She has Tails' special ability of flight using her ears, which I could say doesn't make sense since ears are mostly cartilage and don't really have hardly any muscle control, but who cares, it's fantastic. She also has what I think is her pet Chow named Cheese. I mean, I know it's a Chow named Cheese, but she doesn't- I don't know if she considers it a friend, a sibling, maybe a slave? It's like a lesser evolved version of Sonic and his friends, so I, I don't know. Let's go with Servant to be unoffensive. Cheese can attack enemies from a distance, and it gives Cream the easy flight of Tails and the deadly attack of Amy, which makes her a very strong character to play as. So you can see the replay value in this game is pretty huge. In additions, you get some nice improvements to the level design. This game is a bit less of the speedy pointless parts, and platforming has a lot less trial and error, and error and error, and succeeding now. It's more like trial and error and error. Oh, just two hours this time, such improve. Honestly, the music and themes are just as catchy as ever. And I found this game much more fun to play through with more platforming difficulty and thought put into each stage. You also get a few small things like mini maps, bosses that are even more difficult considering you have to run to keep up with them, and again, the story, which adds replay value and some nice sprite art. Overall, despite there not being much to say about Sonic Advance 2, seeing as it's just the first game with some nice improvements, I'd say that it's definitely still very worth checking out. Uh, it's Sliver back here with another weather report, and today's weather is is looking very... Hold on. Oh, we have a... <clears throat> uh, today's weather is looking extremely... Um, okay, well... Okay, this internet really sucks. Hold on, we probably have one on file, hold on. You've gotta be... Oh, oh, we... Okay, good. Uh, the high forecast of this game. And can I get a raise? Sonic Advance 3- Don't interrupt me! Sonic Advance 3 is the perfect incarnation of the concept that the last two games gave us, and oh boy, is it ever polished and exciting, and I'ma tell you why. First, you know what's cool? Lots of characters. But you know, sometimes Patter just can't decide who to choose. Sometimes he likes everyone too much to pick just one character, and so everybody calls him difficult because he's happy with whatever and won't make decisions because he doesn't care because there's no bad options to him. So why not choose all of them? But at least two of them. In Sonic Advance 3, you can choose two characters to use in the game. You choose one to play as, and one who follows you around and helps out. This has huge advantages in customization. Each character has their own special abilities, and the partner that you choose affects those abilities. For instance, the best combo for me is Tails partnered with Amy. No, it has nothing to do with shipping or romantics, so erase your comments. Anyway, the best couple to pair in romance is Tails and Amy, because you can fly for longer as Tails, and you get to use Amy's hammer. Trying out different combos and characters is one of the most fun parts of this game, and choosing the right boyfriend or girlfriend for each level is the key to success. But always just go with Tails and Amy. On their own, Patty and Sliver are okay! Patty can voice crack, and Sliver can... 
he can't do anything. But now with Sonic Advance 3, you can combine their powers, and you get... Dude, what the heck is that? Your partner also provides moral support. Sometimes you'll be going through a level, and you won't even see your pal for a while, and then BAM! Out of nowhere, he just runs over and dies. And it makes you happy, because it's funny. The next amazing innovation that 3 gave us was the Hub Worlds. In past Sonic Advance games, you had a mission selector mini-map to travel through the game. But here they took a play from Sonic Adventure's playbook and added a sort of overworld, which you may either like or hate. On one hand, you're forced to travel to each world to get into a level, so it's a bit slower paced than just jumping right in from a menu. But on the other hand, there are hidden chow, you can change your characters without quitting the game, and there's even minigames to play. They're not exactly addicting or a huge part of the game, but they gain you extra lives, which is actually pretty helpful. If you're having troubles with a level, just stop by one of these games ahead of time to stock up on immortality. And change the tales on Amy. In other news, the chow room is gone, and I don't know why, but at this point, it's no use putting it in the game like three different times, considering it's exactly the same. So no, it's not a bad thing, it's just trying not to be repetitive. Music, best in the trilogy. From the first level to the last boss, this game was loaded with a brilliant catchy track. And they even threw in a sound test, so screw iPods, just carry your Game Boy Advance and some headphones with you, and you're basically the coolest Deuterino in 2004. And there were some pretty cool Deuterinos in 2004. Okay, so yes, you have the polish, you have the style, you have the choices, and you even have the addition of voice acting. But the gameplay, the level design, does it get rid of the trial and error? And error. Are you still thrown into long, pointless dashes? Is the platforming improved? Well, yeah, a little bit. I mean, there's not really much more to say than that. Sonic Advance 3 improves even further than Sonic Advance 2 did on being less based on memorization, and it has a lot more slow-paced platforming. It still has the pointless yet satisfying speed areas, but they're placed well and they don't feel like you're skipping 90% of the stage. As the game goes on, the platforming gets slower, more deadly, and precise. Although I still have an issue with the slow acceleration that these 2D games seem to have, this game sat very well with me. It was actually the first Sonic game that I ever played through, and it was absolutely glorious. The concept, the difficulty, the bosses, which even in this third installment just had me so frustrated yet addicted for hours. As a younger fan who was obsessed with the characters and lore, the storyboards and voice editions and the gameplay kept me satisfied, and everything about the presentation was done perfectly. This game still has some of the best sprites on the Game Boy Advance, and I was overall completely in love with this first game when I was younger. Now, the gameplay. Yes. In the Sonic Advance series, there are valid complaints to be made about how 70% of the whole series is just holding forward and needing little thought beyond the occasional jump. But not only did this aspect improve with each game, but by the third, it wasn't even something that stuck out. Overall, these advanced titles most likely can't live up to the classic 2D Sonic games, but Sega had been doing those for a while, and so trying to change things up with this trilogy, with a new level design and style, and a very modern, fresh take on the series was actually extremely well done, considering. Even though I think we could use some new games styled like the classic Genesis series, which it looks like we're getting with Sonic Mania, I can't say I blame them for changing things up with Advanced. It was a time when people wanted something a little more fresh, and it delivered a very fun handheld experience. Nothing amazing or groundbreaking, but they made some good games, and I give them credit for that. I think we can all agree that it's a better modernization than Colors was. It turned Sonic into a Cartoon Network comedy. Comedy being in quotation marks. And he's from a far away soda. <laughs> so. I think we should kill it. No, it's our hybrid. It is powerful. How is it powerful? It can voice crack, and it can do nothing. Technically, that means it can do nothing, because voice cracking is a thing. Well, I'm not touching it. Me neither. So what do we do? I don't know, just leave it. It'll be a part of the channel now. I'm worried it'll kill us in our sleep. Well... I don't have any clever ideas of how to end this video or get rid of it. Any mediocre ideas? Hey, what is up, guys? Thanks a ton for watching this video. Sorry, I don't actually know what the next What's Up With will be at the moment, but if you do want to find out as soon as I know what it is, I will be posting it to Twitter. Check out the link to my Twitter page in the description. I post updates to videos all the time there. And, of course, if you like this music, go and check out DJ Basebox whilst you're in the description. His channel is there, and he's got tons of music much like this and other original tunes as well. Definitely check that out. Thank you all a ton for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have yourselves a wonderful day. 
My name is Pitter the Knitter, and I suffer from Ikergehivgewosk... I can't really get into very well. Obia-itis... I can't really get into video... I can't really get into handheld video games very well. Obia-itis... 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 Stupefy Kachow Bazinga Swiggity Swiggity Amen. Obia Itis, uh, Obia Itis, Swiggity Swiggity Amen. Did I get that?